Scripture reading is 1 John 2, 24 and 25. As for you, let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. This is the promise which He Himself made to us eternal life. Amen. After Imano Choir Nisi Orchestra's praise, we will watch the senior pastor's video sermon entitled The Third Lectures on Spirits and Body, Session 11. Loving brothers and sisters in Christ, in the book of Acts, we read that when the Apostle Paul commanded in the name of Jesus Christ, the diseases and weaknesses were healed and demons left. Even handkerchiefs that, and aprons that had touched him were taken to the sick, their, and their illnesses were cured, and the evil spirits left them. Also, you are seeing the things that are recorded in the Bible in reality. Many were amazed by this, and some of them tried to imitate the Apostle Paul. It was the case with the seven sons of Zekeva, a Jewish priest, a chief priest. They tried to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who were demon-possessed. They would say, in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. Then the evil spirits answered them in Acts 19, 15, and 16. Jesus I know, and I know about Paul, but who are you? Then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them all. He gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. Not everybody can receive the power of Jesus Christ just by imitating outwardly. Only when you have the faith in Jesus Christ and can you receive His strength as God's child, and only when that kind of person commands, commands will the enemy devil and Satan tre- tremble with fear. But today, so many people who profess their faith in God cannot drive away darkness with the authority of God's children, but live in tests and trials. Why is this? It is because they live in sin although they profess they believe. In farms or countryside, where do worms and dirty insects gather? They gather at dirty places like toilets or at a heap of um, manure. In the same way, if you still commit sins and do not know, throw away flesh that is dirty and stinky while professing you have faith in uh, the Lord, the evil spirits will not leave you. As God said to the serpent that tempted Eve, you will eat dust. The enemy devil and Satan have the authority to control men of flesh who are made from the dust while they are being cultivated. On this earth. But as you listen to the gospel of holiness and throw away your sins one by one in this church, what happened? You experience bad things turning into blessings. As your soul is prosperous, everything is prosperous with you and you become healthy. Many members testify that their families are evangelized. Before uh, they were evangelized, they used to go to the hospital all the time, and their children were often sick. But since they came to this church, they are healthy without ever having to go to the hospital. Those who can uh, testify like this are the ones who listen to the Word in this church and change themselves and practice the Word. God protects these families so they do not get sick or fall ill.
And once you cast off all flesh and go into spirit completely, God's blessing will come upon you much more greatly and completely. You will receive blessings whether you come in or go out. You will be head and not but not tail, and you will lend but not borrow. You will receive whatever you ask for in prayer, and when you pray for other people, you will receive the power and authority to drive away their diseases and trials. I hope you will cast off all sins quickly and come out as complete men of spirit. I pray in the name of the Lord that you will enjoy the authority of being God's children and receive all the blessings. Brothers and sisters in Christ, in the last session, I explained to you the method how you could cast off flesh. In order to cast off flesh and go into spirit, you first have to cut off the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Then you have to stop all the works of flesh and remove even things of the flesh one by one. But actually, you cannot cut out all lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, but you first cut out the works of the flesh. Then you go from the first level to the second level of faith and go to, uh, to go from the second level to the third level and also to go from the third level to the fourth level. You should remove, remove all the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life in order to cut out all the fleshly thoughts. Only then will all the fleshly thoughts be removed and you will go into spirit. But throwing away flesh, can not only be done by human strength. Along with your effort to cast off sins, you must receive God's grace, strength, and the help of the Holy Spirit. You can remove all the fleshly elements in you when these four things are combined. More specific, specifically, to cast off works of the flesh and things of the flesh, there are many commands of God in the Bible. They say, do this, don't do that, throw this away, away and keep that. There are commands like pray, love, be humble, serve others, do not judge, do not be jealous, do not murder, cast off adulterous mind, throw away pride, keep the Sabbath, and so on. If you keep in mind and obey the commands that say, don't do this and throw that away, it is to throw away flesh. And if you obey the commands that say do this and keep that, the knowledge of Spirit, namely truth, will be filled in you. For a farmer to harvest abundantly, he first has to crowd out the weeds and plant grains. If you obey the words that say don't do and throw away, it is like pulling out weeds from the field of your heart. If you keep the words that say do and keep, it is like sowing the seeds of truth in your heart. You sow the seeds of trust, uh, I mean, you sow the seeds of truth while pulling out the weeds of untruth. And if you continue this process with faith, you will begin to bear the fruit of Spirit. You will bear the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit, the fruit of love in the love chapter in 1 Corinthians, and the fruit of light, the light, and so on. Then you will soon find that you have become a man of Spirit. Some people just want to give up hope from the beginning, saying, I have so much flesh that I cannot throw away, and when can I throw away all of them? But you, don't, you do not have to be discouraged. No matter, what many, no matter how many kinds of fleshly things you have, you can just aim for the biggest one and cast it off. You attack the greatest root of evil that you think you have and work on it. Please think about what it is the most difficult for you to cast off. What is uh, most difficult to throw away? What is the next? When you pull out the big tree, you do not have to pull out all the small roots. Once you pull out the main root, then the other small roots 
will be pulled out together. In the same way, if you cast off the biggest sinful nature in you, you you can throw away the rest easily. For example, if hatred is the biggest sinful nature in you, you can pray fervently and sometimes fast about that and accomplish love, which is the opposite of hatred. You act with love towards those whom you used to hate and sow the seeds of truth now. You hold their hands and smile at them once more, and you can try to find what they need and serve them first, even though they do not ask you to do it o If your hatred is cast off and if you have a spiritual love in this way, you will find that your other untruthful things are also thrown away. You will not either be rude or judge other people. Since you pulled out the big root called hatred and accomplished love, other fleshly elements like small roots are also pulled out. If you throw away evil one by one like this, you will one day find that you have already become sanctified. Loving brothers and sisters, once you get rid of all fleshly things, namely unsuccessful elements, your body will also become a body that belongs to spirit, not flesh. You will have a very healthy body, not a weak body that becomes ill and that cannot overcome tiredness and hunger. Once you come into spirit, you will say you are being rejuvenated. You will feel it. If you come into the whole spirit, you will definitely know that you are being rejuvenated. Before he received the Holy Spirit, Peter could not overcome sleepiness. The night before Jesus took the cross, he went to Gethsemane with Peter and two other disciples. Praying for taking the burden of the cross, Jesus asked his disciples to be awake with him. But the disciples fell asleep, not being able to keep watch for just a couple of hours. Matthew 26, 40 and 41 s a y Then he came to the disciples and found them asleep and said to Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Could you not watch? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. You fall into temptations and you have tests and difficulties because you stop praying. So, watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Loving members, but you shouldn't say this. You shouldn't just quote any verse from the Bible. Some of you give excuses with this verse, but you shouldn't do it. If your spirit is willing, you can do it as you will. Those who can control their heart can control their thoughts, too. They will do as their spirit is willing. If they want to pray, they will pray. If they want to visit a member, they will do it. If they want to get up early in the morning and do something, they will do it. If they want to fast, they will fast. Why can't we do as we want? If we want to control ourselves, we'll do it. Many female members must be feeling this. You say your spirit is willing, but your flesh is weak. You give this excuse because you are still living in the flesh. If you go into spirit, you won't have to have say this. Those who go into spirit completely will do as they want in their heart. What they want in their heart is only truth and spirit, so they will only follow the truth. They will see, hear, and speak according to the truth. 
The phrase flesh is weak does not mean that the body of Peter was weak as most people usually think. Rather, Peter used to be a very strong fisherman and had more strength than other people. What then does this mean? This means that Peter, who had not received the Holy Spirit yet, had not thrown away all his sins, and he had not accomplished the body belonging to spirit yet. If you cast off flesh and go into spirit, your soul and body will be under the control of spirit. So no matter how tired your body is, if your heart wants to stay awake, you can keep yourself from falling asleep. Although Peter was a strong man at that time, because he had not thrown away his flesh completely, he could not control the elements of flesh like tiredness and laziness, even though he wanted to keep watch. Also, after Jesus was arrested, he even denied Jesus whom he loved due to fear. This was also because his flesh was weak. If he had been able to control his soul with his spirit, he could have overcome the fear. But because he could not do it, such a great offense was committed. Since the opening of this church, for example, Even if someone pinches on my skin so hard, even if uh, he twisted, twists my skin, I don't feel any pain. Even if uh, somebody hits me with a rod, I don't feel pain. How is it possible? If you go into whole spirit, it will be the same with you. Why? It's because you'll be able to control your heart and strength, uh, how heart and thoughts. If you control your heart and thoughts and think that it doesn't hurt you at all, your thoughts will follow your heart, so you won't feel any pain. Suppose you have motion sickness and get car sick. If, but if you fall asleep, do you still get car sick? You won't have any thoughts, so you won't get sick. It's the same, because you will control your thoughts, you won't have pain. If you come into spirit and hold spirit, you'll be able to experience like this. Well, some people try to justify themselves giving the example of Peter in this example. They say, even Jesus' past to disciple Peter could not overcome sleepiness, and he even denied the Lord three times, so I can make mistakes any time. But this does not make sense because it was before he received the Holy Spirit that Peter's flesh was weak. You have received the Holy Spirit, and so you shouldn't say such a thing. Peter had denied the Lord three times, and he couldn't watch and pray before he received the Holy Spirit. After he received the Holy Spirit and cast off his flesh, he was not tired or sick due to weakness, and rather, but rather he healed the sicknesses and infirmities of people, drove away demons, and even brought the dead people back to life. Until he volunteered to be hung on a cross upside down, he was changed into a strong and brave man who could take all kinds of hardships without any fear. You, who have received the Holy Spirit, will also have body belonging to Spirit to the extent that you accomplish sanctification in your heart. Even though you have not become fully sanctified, as much as you change into Spirit, God will give you more help. The word you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers is fulfilled for you. There are many members in this church who testify that they have become healthy like this. 
There are many who were healed of diseases and disabled bodies, and also among elderly members, there are many who gained youth after they began to attain this church. They often used to fall down, having no strength in their legs, and many parts of their bodies were sick. But since they began to attain this church, they rather became healthier and stronger as they got older. Some of them say they have no problem climbing up high staircases that even young people would feel tired to climb to deliver the church newsletters. As they cry out in prayers, cast of flesh, and are filled with the Holy Spirit every day, their weak bodies become healthy, proving that the Word of God is true. Loving members, in the third lectures of Spirit and Soul and Body, I explained about elements of flesh that will perish and that we have to cast off. After you throw away untruths that belong to flesh, your body will also become a body belonging to Spirit so that you will be healthy and full of the Holy Spirit. Now, we have finished with the aspect of body in the third lecture on spirit, soul, and body. And let us go into the aspect of uh, soul. In the aspect of soul, we mostly learn to change the soul that belongs to flesh into the soul that belongs, belongs to spirit. First, let us briefly review what soul is. We have memory device in our brains. Knowledge that we gain as we continue our lives, namely many concepts, Contents that we have seen, heard, learned, and experienced are stored in this memory device. There are some people who lost their memory after they got injured in their head in a traffic accident or something. It's because their memory device is damaged. When we retrieve the stored data, namely the contents that are remembered, we call it thoughts. Also, we say a person is wise when he utilizes his knowledge well. The memory device in our brain, the knowledge stored in it, and the operations or retrieving those things are called soul as a whole. Let us think of computers. They have memory device, and we can store data in the memory device. Later, we can search the data and find something or use the data for some other purpose. If you store a lot of information, you can utilize much. If you have much knowledge by reading many books or education, you can utilize it. The memory device and the data of the computer in the process of searching and using the data as a whole can be compared to the soul of man. So if you store only good things in the computer, you will retrieve only good things. If you store bad things, you will retrieve bad things. bad things. Because you have some bad data that tempt young people, they get into those evil things. Our young members can go only good way if you store only good things. It's the same principle. The ways people see, hear, and put things, what kinds of knowledge they have, and how they retrieve this knowledge and how they use it are all different. Their environments in which they were raised are different, and what they saw, heard, and learned are different. So, even in the same situation, people think and react in completely different ways because they have different kinds of operations of soul. To divide this operation of soul into two general categories, there is operation of soul belonging to flesh and that belong, belonging to flesh. Spirit. In other words, people have fleshy thoughts or spiritual thoughts. What then is fleshly thought and spiritual thought? 
A thought occurs when people retrieve their stored knowledge and make use of it. At this time, the thought is different according to whether they use the knowledge of truth or the knowledge of untruth. When the knowledge of truth, that is the word of God, is used, they have spiritual thoughts. And when the knowledge of untruth is used, they have fleshly thoughts. But just knowing the truth in our head would not necessarily lead us to have spiritual thoughts. We will have spiritual thoughts to the extent that we have knowledge of spirit in our heart, namely to the extent that we have cast off flesh and accomplished a spiritual heart. The truth in our heart will be retrieved and utilized so that we will have spiritual thoughts. Let me give you an example. Suppose that a person has insulted you so much in front of so many people. He is uh, threatening and cursing at you for something that you absolutely have nothing to do with. At this time, those who have knowledge of truth in their heart will first have spiritual thoughts like meekness, peace, and compassion. They would think, I should not make this person have discomfort. I will answer him in a way that his anger will calm down. Also, they would not hate that person, but only have mercy and pity for him because he has to show his evil like that. If he strikes their right cheek, they would want to turn to him the other also. Because they want to have peace, even by humbling themselves, they would not have any anger or fight back against him. But those who have fleshly thoughts will have anger, thinking, why should I bear with this kind of thing? I have to show him something. Only if you don't have anger in you, how peaceful your mind will be. If you have anger, it proves you have evil in you. Just imagine you don't have any anger. How peaceful and happy your heart will be. You will have peace and joy in all kinds of circumstances. If you get angry, your happiness, thanks, and joy joy will disappear. What makes you get angry? It's the enemy devil and Satan that agitates your heart and thoughts to get angry. They make you stand against God. So if you pull this out quickly, you'll be filled with the joy of God, happiness, peace, and thanks. You will receive the answer quickly when you have these. But if you still belong to the flesh, you will still receive the works of Satan. Those who are in flesh have to fast and pray all night and offer vowed prayers to receive some answers. Some of them have to pray like that for many days, maybe for a week, and for some people, they have to pray for months to barely receive the answer. How pitiful this is. But those who have gone into spirit do not have to fast, pray all night, or offer vowed prayers for their own problems in their lives, things that are not related with the kingdom of God. Why? They will receive the answer immediately. Even though they don't pray like that, they always have communication with God, and they receive the answer quickly. If you go into whole spirit, you will receive the answers immediately on the day it is needed, or it will be given in that week. Why is it so? How can you pray for something you need today and receive the answer today? God is very close to men of the whole spirit. God considers them as one with Him. He, God loves them very much. They are people like Abraham, Enoch, Eliza, 
and Moses. God treats them like his friends and one with him. So, because he foreknows what they need, they prepare the things in advance. But those who have fleshly thoughts will have anger, thinking, why should I bear what, with this kind of thing? I have to show him something. Immediately, they raise their voice and argue, and fighting will be caused. But not only non-believers, but also among the believers, there are so many people like this. They know in their head very well that they should give the other chick if someone strikes one of their chicks and that they should not get angry but pay back evil with goodness. But because they have not accomplished those words in their hearts, they first have fleshly thoughts just like the worldly people. They can have spiritual thoughts as much as they have accomplished the spiritual heart, and this can be applied in the opposite way. Namely, only when you break all of your fleshy thoughts can you go into spirit and receive blessings from God. Romans 8, 7 says, The mindset on the flesh is hostile toward God, for it does not subject itself to the law of God, for it is not even able to do so. Fleshly thoughts are hostile toward God, so those who stay in flesh will always speak and act like an enemy of God. When Satan works, they follow. When Satan tempts them, they fall into temptation. That's why the mindset on the flesh is hostile toward God, for it it does not subject itself to the law of God, for it is not even able to do so. Even if they want something good in their heart, it is difficult to do it. Well, one person was consulting me, and I see it was difficult for him to receive salvation because of his grave sins. I was embarrassed. How should I solve this problem? He asked me to pray for him, but I couldn't really do it. I couldn't bless him or do anything for him. So I explained, quoting from the Bible, why his sins cannot be forgiven by God. But he says he doesn't understand why I am rebuking him. Also, he says he doesn't understand why I rebuked him before. I explained to him with earnest heart, but he was saying those things. He says he found out only later that it was against the rules of the church. So, I told him, it is not the rules of the church, but it is God's law. It is strictly prohibited in both all the New Testaments. And that person is not even a new believer, but he was still saying it. I was explaining to him why they were sins quoting from the Bible, but he only received it as a rebuke. How pitiful it is. I tried to explain to him, and I was thinking of the ways to guide him to the way of salvation, and finally, I couldn't pray for him in the end. But later, God opened the way. According to the justice, It was unforgivable, but in my heart, I eagerly wanted to guide him to the way of salvation. I thought and worried about it deeply. Then, I came up with an idea that in a certain way, he might be forgiven. So, I called him again and prayed for him.
If he kept the word of God and the word of truth in his heart and practiced it, he would understand why I was saying it and that I was trying to save him with love. But because he doesn't keep the message in his heart or practice it, even after he committed such a grave sin, he was receiving my explanations only as a rebuke. How beautiful it is. I worried again and again, and I was trying to find a way for his salvation, and I find a way. So I called him again and uh, prayed for him to the Father. Well, the mind s e t on the flesh is hostile toward God, for it, is, it does not subject itself to the law of God. It even says it is hostile toward God. So with these fleshly thoughts, you can never go into spirit or receive God's blessings. But people do not even clearly know what fleshly thoughts are. Their lives are full of fleshly thoughts using their wrong knowledge, framework, and theory, but they do not even realize that they are having fleshly thoughts. What kind of fleshly thoughts are there then? I will continue with this in the next session. Let me conclude the message. Loving members, if you cast off fleshly thoughts and have the operation of soul belonging to spirit, you'll be able to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit clearly. The worldly people cannot see even the nearest future, and even though they make plans for their lives, nobody can guarantee the success of their plans. Even though they seem to be prosperous at one point, everything might fall down at a moment. Even the things that seem to be impossible can be solved in a moment, or they can also turn into prosperity. But the Holy Spirit searches even the deep things of the heart of the Almighty God and let us, lets us know His will clearly. One thing you pastors or workers who take care of souls want very much is to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit clearly. It's the same when, with you, members, and also those who are doing businesses. How wonderful it will be only if you are able to hear clearly the voice of the Holy Spirit and receive His guidance clearly. But is it difficult? It's not difficult at all. Only if we listen to what the Holy Spirit lets, lets us know and obey it, will we be prosperous in everything by walking on the path of blessings that God has prepared for us. To receive this kind of blessing, we have to diligently fill our heart with the truth of knowledge and operate our soul only in the truth by keeping and obeying God's commands that say, do this, don't do that, keep this, and throw that away. I bless in the name of the Lord that you will be able to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit and receive His guidance so that you will dwell in the blessings of God who leads you to the way of prosperity. Let's pray thinking over the message. Hallelujah, 사랑의 주 아버지 하나님, 오늘은 영에 속한 영혼 육을 입게 나오게 하여 주시옵소서. 감사드리며 우리 주 예수 그리스도. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Let us receive the prayer for the sake of the senior pastor through video. Please lay your hands on your sick heart or lay your hands on your chest for the desire of your heart, and receive the prayer with faith. Hallelujah, Almighty God, our loving Father. Please lay your hands on all believers who are receiving this prayer now. Show your works that transcend time and space on those who are receiving this prayer through GCN, Internet, and Satellite TV in branch churches and local sanctuaries and all other children of God around the world.
Give them the faith to believe from heart, drop away negative thoughts and doubts, and drop away all tests and trials. From head to toe, all in trails, joints, nerves, tissues, and cells, whatever the sick part may be, burn them with the fire of the Holy Spirit in the original light. In the name of Jesus Christ, they command the enemy devil and Satan, all diseases, germs, and viruses, and infirmities go away. Light come. Please scorch all your terminal incurable diseases with the fire of the Holy Spirit. Drive away all endemic diseases, including malaria. All contagious diseases, cold, including cold, flu, and fever, go away. Protect them from all kinds of germs and viruses. Heal them of all stomach, lung, liver, breast, uterine, and intestinal cancers, AIDS, leukemia, cerebral p a l e x y high and low blood pressure, diabetes, b a t t e r problem, and heart, lung, and women's diseases, and all inflammations go away. Heal them of polio, stroke, arthritis, and herniated discs. Back pain, headache, neuralgia, and all other pains disappear. Epilepsy, autism, depression, neurosis, and other mental diseases go away. All kinds of paralysis be loosened, get up, walk, and leave. Let the eyes see well, let the ears hear well. Let the blind come to see, the deaf to hear, and the mute to speak. Heal them of after effects of all kinds of accidents, fix their broken bones. Restore them from burns. Let the heat and burning sensation go away. Father, let there be no scar left. Be cleansed from all kinds of drug addictions, poisoning, and substance abuse. Let the dead nerves, tissues, and cells be regenerated. Bring the dead back to life. Give them the blessings of conception. Receive the blessing of conception. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, the ruler of the power of the air, The evil forces of the heavenly places and their servants go away. Go away, evil, unclean, false, and deceitful spirits, spirits, separating spirits and all forces of darkness. Loosen the bonds of wickedness, darkness, go away. Light come. Father God, give them strength to crowd in prayer and the power to cast off sins and become sanctified. As their souls prosper, let all things go well with them, and let their families be evangelized. Protect them from all kinds of accidents and disasters throughout this week, and bless them to lead a prosperous life without any problems. With the fiery words of the Holy Spirit, heavenly hosts and angels, and with your blazing eyes, protect all your children, their families, workplaces, and business fields. Give students wisdom and understanding, and give them enthusiasm and fervor to study hard. Please keep their hearts and minds from working. worldly things, and let them love God more fervently. Whether your children eat or drink, or in whatever they do, let them do it all to live a life glorifying you, Father God. Let them be able to testify about the living God, saying, I have met and experienced God and received His answers and blessings. Father God, thank you. Be glorified alone. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.